All right, everyone, so in my last video, I showed me measuring the run out of my bullet to the case with the RCBS case master. So now there's quite a few questions on that, so let's break this down and talk about what I was actually doing. First thing to address is, was I measuring concentricity or run out? So now this particular tool, what it does is it allows me to measure run out of the bullet. So now, run out is a measurement term that basically is taking this dial indicator, running it along a point, while you're rotating around a datum structure. So that is what runout is, and that's what this is measuring. So now runout is a combination of concentricity and roundness. So it's measuring the roundness of the projectile. So if it's oblong shape, it's gonna move the indicator up and down with the oblongness. And if it's off center, it's gonna pick up that off center cant as well. So assuming the bullet's perfectly round, this would measure concentricity, but technically this is runout because it's measuring roundness and concentricity. Now the way this works is it's got this two V blocks set up down in the bottom that the case body is then set into and it centers the case within the fixturing. You then adjust the dial indicator to go to whichever point you want. You can measure the case neck, the bullet, or even further out on the ogive and get your measurements and then you're spinning it around the case body using that as your datum. So all of your measurements are gonna be in reference to the roundness of the outside of the case. Now there are a few things I do usually check with this tool. So the first one is going to be the concentricity of the neck to the case body. So before I even put a bullet in or do any loading or anything, I'm going to be checking the cases and make sure that the neck is lined up with the body diameter so I don't have the neck offset from the rest of the case. So usually that's going to be controlled by your resizing die. So I only check this just to ensure that all of my setup and my tools, everything is aligned the way it's supposed to be and I'm not inducing any error through the loading process and all my stuff's being able to float and move the way it should be. So let's actually do some measurements with this and kind of see what we're looking for. So what I have here is I have a fired case. This one is coming straight out of the gun before it has been resized. So I'm going to put it on the indicator, put it in the V blocks, we'll turn it and look at that. I mean, barely, barely any run out. So what that's telling me is that my chamber is true because this has just been fired. So any misalignment would come from the case expanding in the chambers. This tells me my chambers is good. It gives me a good starting point as I go through the process to make sure I don't actually go through and induce any new run out error through my process. All right, now I'm back with the same case. I just ran it through my resizer in the press decapped it. Now let's do another check now and make sure that nothing I did in that step of the process um, induced any error into the case. So we're indexing off the case body, rotate it around, and you can see still barely, barely any movement, well under a thou of run out in the case neck to the case body. So everything in my die and setup seems to be true up to this point. So now we can load the round in, um, get the bullet seated, go back and do another check again and make sure everything is still staying um, concentric with little run out like we're looking for. And then after the neck has been measured and you've gone through and done the reloading process, now you've got the bullet in and now you can measure the run out of the bullet to the case body as well. So you, the one you saw, I was measuring a little bit closer to the case neck. That was just making sure that the bullet was seated correctly and didn't pull anything off center when it was aligned. So as you can see in the video though, the further out you get, you do get a little bit of run out in the point. So as much as we like it to be completely perfect, you're never gonna be perfect on everything. The further out you get to the point, you've got a much longer area of that error to propagate. So you move out to the point and you are gonna start picking up on more run out errors than you would closer to the case neck because if you have any distortion, that is gonna propagate and show up greater further away. So you will see more towards the ogive and the meat plate of the bullet, but that is just um, due to the nature of what we're finding here. Okay, so we now have a bullet seated into the cartridge. So now I'm gonna put it back on the indexer, but you can tell I was measuring case neck before, so I'm gonna bump this back just a little bit. So I'm gonna loosen these screws and I'm gonna move the V blocks back a little bit so that I am measuring on the bullet point. So now we'll go ahead and give that a roll. And right now where I'm at is just forward of the case mouth right on the bearing surface. So like I said, right out of the case mouth, 
If the case mount's true and the bullet's seated and didn't force any pressure one side or the other, it should be true, which is what it looks like we're seeing here. So everything stayed true through that step of the process. But now let's come and measure just a little bit further up on the OJ. Like I said, the bullet, the further out you get, the more error can be induced just due to the propagation of that error through the length. So make sure, okay, so I've got pressure still in the dial indicator. Now let's come. We're going to roll it, and now you can see at this point I'm still still under a 1,000, but getting closer to a 1,000. Now the biggest question, does it actually matter? So now I've done tests um, and gone through and shot groups and set the bullets based on runout size from 5 thou run out at the bullet right past the case mouth um, all the way down to essentially zero, less than one, less than a half a thousandth of an inch. Um, what I did notice was that there was not a significant improvement in group size controlling the run out 20 different degrees below there. So really what I'm using it to do is just to set up, check my tools, make sure that all of my dies, my shell holders, everything is moving and aligning the way it should, the bullet's getting seated, and nothing is forcing the casing to become off-center or not con not concentric so really that's all i'm doing as far as going through and actually measuring run out if your tools are set up correctly um, if the process is good really any run out that you do see is most likely going to be negligible for what you're trying to do now can it ever be off enough to actually cause a problem so when the chamber is cut into the rifle barrel most likely it's going to be cut by a chamber reamer so that's going to cut the chamber the free bore the lead in all that stuff is going to be cut in one precisely controlled reamer. So when that bullet's going in there in the cartridge, you need that thing to feed smooth actually with the bullet and the cartridge. If your bullet is kicked up at an angle, meaning you've got excessive run out somewhere, something's not aligned, when you go to push it into the chamber, the chamber will kind of push and force everything into alignment. But what that means is that means that you are pre-stressing the bullet when it's getting fed into the chamber, you are torquing it in there and you're adding unequal pressure around the case neck and the cartridge. So the whole point of this is basically just to check uniformity, make sure that when that bullet is gonna be fed into the chamber and go through the barrel, we are gonna get the pressures, forces, and everything on that bullet as equal as possible around the diameter. We don't wanna have any high pressures on one side, low pressures on the other, or that's gonna cause the bullet to twist and distort. It will slightly align itself as it's forced through the barrel, but too much air will kinda of cause a little bit of pressure or unevenness on one side or the other.